find someone that's going to be able to help you along your journey. I think. Hey, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. yeah. What's that? You got, got to find someone that, that can help you. There we're talking. Okay, there you go. Uh, now it's two two. I think. Okay. See, some. I, I feel but that's, like you but that's that right. See, everyone mm-hmm. will say, you know, you keep going, dude. You just keep going. Well, dude, no. Everybody knows that. Problem is, nobody does it. Why? Well, because they don't have anybody holding them accountable. Yes. They don't reach out and find somebody else to that have already been there and done that to kind of coach them through it. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio, folks. As always, I've still not missed a day of bringing you a treat, and today's no different. I got you two treats today, Jason and Jenna Arsenault. Now, it's Arsenault, right? It is, mm-hmm. yep. Even though it's pre- it's spelled Arsenault. Yes. It's Arsenault. Arsenault it's French. It's French, of course. Mm-hmm. And you guys are from Canada. Yes, we are. And you guys are the president and CEO of arsenal canine that's right that's right thanks brad for having us on the show we really appreciate it yeah i got we we have such a story to tell you on how we got here and how we met and how we got to this point but i want to get this out here right away if anybody loves their dog i'm going to give you my phone number right off the bat it's uh, 601-533-5554. If you need anything about dogs, if you have any questions about dogs, hit us up. We train everything, small dogs, big dogs, uh, aggressive dogs, um, nervous dogs, reactive dogs, uh, protection dogs, police dogs, everything. So if you have any question dog related, if you want to know about our program programs, uh, that number I gave you is the number that Jenna phones me on. So that's my number. I got him she, trained really well. She you, trains me. You just gave you just gave a ton of people your phone number. I did. How do you know they're all going to call you? Well, maybe they'll we start want. pranking you. <laughs> yeah, there you you go. know what? That's what we're looking forward to. Okay. <laughs> Bomb Squad. He's looking for some pranks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, let's make him regret giving out a phone number. Oh no, let's don't. Let's 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 call him if you have any dog questions. And there's a lot of people that have dogs. Obviously, what, what's the what's the percentage of people that have dogs in the world? I think it's probably about it's at over least seventy five percent. So yeah. that means there's seventy five percent good people in the world. I would mm-hmm. think so, yeah. Because if because if you don't have a dog, I got a question, yeah. 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 I know. yeah, and if you if it's cat stuff, sorry. That's no, you, you can't have a cat. I mean, dude, I I like cats. I don't mind cats, but you, you gotta have a dog. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you don't have a dog, something's wrong. It says something about you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now again, in some cases, <laughs> Uh, I would recommend someone doesn't have a dog. Like for example, let's say one of my kids, you know, are going off to college, but then they want to get a puppy. No, you know, mm-hmm. get a puppy after you get out of college. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, cause you got to give them attention. We were just talking about it. Yeah. Like dude, that, that's why I don't bring them everywhere. Cause dude, I got, I got shit to do and I don't have time to be paying attention to a dog whenever I go somewhere. And that's one of the biggest problems with our training programs is we preach to people that they need to do that follow up after the training's done. Mm-hmm. You, can pull, you can pull that mic closer. All right, sorry about that. It you, moves. No, just pull it. Pull it to where you're comfortable. There you go. There we go. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. However, whatever makes you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you can send your dog away to us for a month at a time, or you, we can do our one-on-one training programs. But if you don't do anything after the training, that training is all just going to go away. See, that's another thing that I found out. That sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah. So well, you, just, you spend all that time and money training a dog, and then it goes away. Well, it's just like weight loss, right? If you're not constantly eating better and working out and fitness all that kind of stuff you're gonna get fat again i know but a dog has a brain it's not the same kind of brain as we have though unfortunately (laughs) no memories there is a little bit yeah they they retain things but it's that muscle memory right so they don't don't have much memories because like i'll leave the house for five minutes come back home she'll act like freaking i've been gone for a month yeah Yeah. and then i'll and i'll literally leave go out to the garage come back in and she forgot completely that that she got excited again and she's excited again well that's how i tell if jenna really or who likes me more the dog or jenna right i lock them both in the trunk of my car and a little while later i'll let them out and whoever is more excited to see me that's the one who loves me most she's mostly mad but yeah you know. well i think i think i think a dog usually probably does love a person more than their spouse oh yeah yeah they're uh they're loyal they are 100 mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. like there's no well, there could be. I was going to say there could be coaxing a dog. I've never tried, but you know, you can coax you can coax women away from their men, and you can coax men away from their women fairly 
easy yeah. men easier than women but still <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, i've never heard of a dog being coaxed away like that's your dog i can't sit there and be all nice to it and have have it want to come with me no i mean we've we've sold dogs that go to their new owners and they, they make a bond with that owner but if i come around then that dog is coming right back to me, depending on the time on I've had them, like especially puppies that we've raised. Don't you litters. feel bad selling them? We do a little bit. You do, you do. But the thing is, is you see them excelling in another, you know, environment, right? So with a lot of these working dogs, you know, they're meant for working, right? So when you train them and then they go into these, you know, departments and you see them actually on the streets doing work, like that's awesome to see. Or dogs that don't meet those expectations and they're, you know, active pet dogs, seeing them with, you know, an owner where they can, you know, get out, go get hiking, out, do all that all kind of yeah. stuff too. So I find like, it is sad you do build these bonds with these different dogs, but seeing them in environments where they excel is, I don't know, that's rewarding. Well, just like on the way here, we, we dropped off a dog. We had a puppy that um, we had raised the litter, right? My female had a, a litter of puppies and we raised it up till 10 months old. and. We donated, um, we donated them to the Montgomery Police Department um, as a- Why Montgomery Police Department? Well, I had, I had some connections there. I've oh. trained with some of those guys before. So we, I thought maybe it'd be a good place for him to work. And so they're gonna see how he does and like, he's turned out pretty good so far. So that's, that's rewarding in itself. Just having that dog that you've raised, even though you have a bond with him, sending them out to do something that they are meant to do. You used to be a cop. I did. For yeah. 15 years? 15 years with uh, Saskatoon Police Department. In the old Saskatoon. Yeah, Saskatoon. <laughs> I thought that they only had Royal Mounted Police up there. No, no, lots of places have uh, municipal departments. Yeah, we have, there's a couple provinces that have provincial police, but. Uh, yeah, a little yeah. bit different than it's, the it's states. It's a lot did different you meet him when he was a cop? No. Thank goodness. No. <laughs> Why, thank goodness. <laughs> a totally different person now. Totally different person. It's better as a dog trainer now, I guess. <laughs> what, what made you decide to train dogs instead of being a cop? Well, I, uh, I actually had a call um, during my policing career where, um, you know, it didn't sit well with me. I, I ended up getting post-traumatic stress disorder from this call. Um, and then I was re recommended that I didn't go back to policing. So, is that what they call it? Policing? Policing, yeah. <laughs> law enforcing. I don't yeah, know. Law enforcement. Law enforcement, yeah. yeah. So, I just, I just say policing. But I, I was told not to go back. Um, I really didn't know what else I was going to do. And, uh, you know, I had a passion for dogs. My dad used to raise dogs for the, for the Mounties. And uh, so, I had some experience there. Um, and I just decided to make a business out of it. I just, you know, I, I was done, had no income coming in and I needed to support my family. So now did you know her at the point? No. no. So were you scared? Oh yeah. I was very scared. Like, did you, did you think, Oh shit, my world, my world's going to crash. Yep. Yep. I thought, you know, I thought it was, I, I was looking for other jobs I could do like, um, for, so they get this, I started driving bus. So they wouldn't let you police anymore. Well, the, the, the department probably would have, but they would have put me in like a different section. Um, but my doctors and stuff required me to not have certain. You must have saw some traumatic shit. Yeah, it was. It was it, like dead babies and shit. Yeah. Oh, man, that yeah. sucks. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the reason why I went off. It was a it was actually a, a call that I I attended to. We beat the paramedics there and um, I was doing, I had to do CPR on this baby and it was a, it was a lot for me. Um, I bet. I was going mm -hmm. through a divorce at the time as well and I had, uh, my little guy was um, two, three years old at the time too. So that, it kind of messed me up and yeah. It'd mess anyone up. Yeah. That's, that's how, especially when it's kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, someone even, I, I was talking to a cop friend of mine, he walked in and saw this lady with her head blown off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That messed him up, and it was a full-grown lady. Yeah. yeah. But she apparently shot herself in the head, and it was, like, open, and, like, you know, totally. brains are on the wall. It's like, what the hell? Are you yeah. serious? He's like, yeah. And it messed him up. I, you think, you, it, it, who cares? Like, I, I could see it, but when until you do, you don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like, then I think a lot of it depends, too, on, like you said, like, what else is going on in your life at that time? Like, the yeah. certain connections that your brain will make, you know, to what other stuff you have going on, yeah. right? So, but Jenna, what'd you do before? A lot of stuff. So I used to do, I did run my own dog training business kind of as a side hustle for a while. Coincidentally? Yeah, yeah, so that's how we met was through through dog training. But um, 
you know, I tried doing like the nine to five. I had worked, I actually wanted to get into working dogs. So I got hired on as like basic level security guard. And what I wanted to do was get my dogs involved in, uh, in the security stuff. So I get hired for this company. It was um, a marijuana company in Canada because I got legalized. So we go in and they had like no policies, no procedures, nothing for security. They had, they didn't even know we need licenses and stuff. So I came in and I don't even think I did much for actual security guard stuff. I had just kind of learned how to build a, a whole department for security. And then, so yeah, I built their, you know, majority of their security department and then just kind of kept, I'm, I like challenging myself. So I, that was, I'd achieved that and that was cool. So then I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? Well, they had no training for any of the staff or any documentation of this, which is crazy. This is a really, you know, big marijuana company. And, uh, so I built their whole training program and then I realized that I'm putting a lot of effort into building other people's stuff and I'm still constricted. You know, your pay is not really getting increased. I'm doing my dog training in the evenings and on the weekends. And, uh, I'm just, you know, I enjoyed it, but I needed to, I took that leap and just had to go work for myself. I needed that hundred percent control, I guess. Of Were you afraid? <laughs> yes. I, I don't know. I, enjoy taking risks. I don't know. It's weird. I kind of like that adrenaline, like, holy shit. Like, I don't know how this is going to work, but ultimately at the end of the day, like we were just talking about this, like, like what's the worst that happens? The worst thing that happens is you run out of money and you go get a job again. And see, you see now a lot of people will exaggerate the worst that can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I always teach people <clears throat> to think what's the worst that can happen mm -hmm. and what is the worst thing that can happen? Go bankrupt. <laughs> I, think that, yeah. I think that's the worst thing that could happen. You that, go that bankrupt. Is, that is not the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> what else can happen? Uh, I guess you could die. You could die. That is the worst <laughs> thing that could happen. Yeah. yeah. So when you say, well, what's the worst that could happen? Instantly you think, I'm not going to die. Yeah. You know, might go broke. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I can get another job. Yeah. And, that, and that's why me and you are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's why I have multiple companies. Why? Because I, I, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. It doesn't work. And I go get a job. I, I was, I, was, I had a job before I started my company. The difference is, is with my company, I'm the boss. Exactly. I do what I want to do, even though I do what I don't want to do mm -hmm. in order to be the boss. Yep. I do what I want to do. Yeah. Um, no one tells me what to do. If I want to take an extra two weeks to drive around the country, I can. I can take a month off if I want. I don't have to ask. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Well, that's, but, but that's, but that's because I think the same thing you just said. Yeah. So, so, that's what people need to pay attention there to. You go. Well, yeah, they need our, to, one of our goals is to get a bomb on here. For well, you sure. got one. Yeah. <laughs> because, a, it is a competition though. So we'll although, <laughs> although it was mine, <laughs> no, it was yours because it's true, but you didn't, you didn't say it as a, as a lesson. I'm making it one so people mm -hmm. can understand that you have to sometimes think in your head, what is the worst that can happen? Cause nine times out of 10, it's not that big of a deal. No. People say, well, Brad, that's easy for you to say because you got all this money. Well, <laughs> if I lost all my money, I would just go make more mm -hmm. some other way. Yes, it's a bitch. Yes, it's inconvenient, mm -hmm. but it's not like the end of life. Yeah. It's like an inconvenience. Big deal. It's mm -hmm. like, come on. That's yeah. what risk is about. Totally. And, and, and it pays off. It's paid off for you guys now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, got your, you got your children's book. What's this? So that's that's a, a book I wrote for, you know, ages probably about five to six years old about, you know, learning how to adapt with a new dog in the house. There are different responsibilities that are going to come from getting a puppy in, in the household. And, you know, um, my son, it's it's named after my son, Odin's new best friend. And he doesn't like dogs. <laughs> which is so <laughs> which weird. Is, which is weird, but, <laughs> but yeah. He doesn't just, like dogs. I know. Yeah, he's, he's you a better cat go person. question that boy. Yeah. Well, his, his mom uh, <laughs> likes cats. And so, yeah, so that's, 
that's the book that kind of wrote that. And what, what makes that, that book really nice is that, you know, a big thing I think is people, they get puppies, like kids will want puppies and, yeah, but every, they don't feel, every kid you usually know, wants a puppy. Exactly. So it's, it's a common thing, but how do you explain, you know, we're always like, Oh, there's responsibilities that come with puppies. Right. But yeah, but they're the parents responsibilities. Yeah, exactly. Well, they end up being right. So they, I was, should, they I, shouldn't be. <laughs> well, I know, but I told my girls, you know, if we get it, if we get it, you're going to do the, you know, you're going to feed them and you have to pick up their shit and all this. And then of course they, okay, okay. But then they never do. Yeah. And then you end up doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the dog has to be fed. Yep, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, uh, I see what you're saying. So that book would help, uh, a parent teach their kid the responsibilities of a puppy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I and think anyone know. who's ever going to get a puppy should get that book first. I think so. I think so for kids. Where and do they get it? Where they at, from Amazon? Yeah, Odin's new best friend. That's mm-hmm. right. That's a, that's a good idea. Write a little book. Make sure they have an understanding of responsibility. Yeah. Yep. And then you wrote the ultimate canine planner. Mm-hmm. So this planner is basically I like writing notes. I like key, like anything with training you have to, I personally believe document where you're at, right? Because it's easy to kind of get into like a spiral of doing the same thing over and over and over again. So, but isn't that training? Yes. But I think you also have to kind of push that next level too, right? You can kind of get in your comfort zone and then you got to push to that next level to, you know, achieve more goals. Right. So I find with dog training, you know, like, let's say you're walking. So I'm just going to do turns, right? And I'm going to keep doing turns with my dog. Well, then you end up doing left turns over and over and you can't do a right turn, right? So you get stuck in doing typically what you're good, like what you're good at, right? And then you don't push these next levels. So you can't get, you know, the full complete picture. So Hmm. with this planner, not only does it help you document what you're doing, but it helps break down goals. So I personally think you need to have a goal with your dog. So if you don't understand, you know, what your end game is, how do you know, how do you know what to aim for? Right? So this helps you figure out, okay, what kind of dog do you have? Cause I mean, we could go deep dive into this, but like there's genetics. So you're going to have dogs that are genetically going to be better at different things than other dogs, right? Like these shepherds and Malinois, they're typically, they like to, you don't know, you do think better. Malinois are the best? I think Malinois are the best. Mm. She's German shepherds. She was more of a German shepherd. German person. shepherds get too big. They can. They're not supposed to. Like you can get. You're supposed to. They're supposed to be. My smaller, buddy has but. German shepherds. They're monsters. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah. Big old freaking faces. Big old snouts. I know. The ones I like. They're they're more like Malinois. They're smaller. They're agile. So you like yeah. Malinois? Yeah. We'll say that. She does now. I've yeah. now said that. Yeah. Malinois here, are so like Malinois are like lean German shepherds. Yes. Yeah. Very athletic. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, with that planner, basically it helps you set that goal so that you understand kind of, and make sure like you're gauging, like, I know we had this conversation in, I think this was April last year where you'd mentioned like, this you know, Phoenix, having yeah. this small, like small attainable goals, right? So everyone always sets these big goals that are, you know, hard to really track that progress. Right. And that's the same thing with dogs. You need to have these small attainable goals so that you can ensure that you're kind of staying on that right track. Right. And you're so, building confidence. Yeah. Building in confidence. The dog in the dog and you as a trainer. Yeah. So this kind of just helps you stay on track with that. And where do they get that? Same thing. Amazon. Um, what if they go to arsenal canine.com? What's that? Yeah, we have a, we have a shop on our website. You can get it from there, but it it eventually just leads you through to Amazon as well. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I do with my book. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's, because I don't want to ship it and all that deal. Oh, they've made it like super easy. So, so, uh, folks, by the way, you want to follow them on Instagram at arsenal canine and at arsenal underscore canine. What's the difference? My team did this, so maybe it's wrong. (laughs) So, you go ahead. What's your, IG? What's your IG, Jenna? So the IG is Arsenal Canine Academy. So this is new. It was Arsenal Canine, but since we have that, been doesn't even of, matter. It's Arsenal Canine, Canine Academy. Academy. There you go. Yeah. That's where they follow you. That's where they'll follow us. Yeah. Now that's where they. That's where they. Do you guys have your own personal accounts or no? We do. We have um, IG is the official Jason Jenna. So we have that on there. You guys are like a couple for. Oh, we are. Like we you can't, even have, you can't even have your own IG account. No. 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 Because yeah, I'm guys, the one <laughs> managing it. So <laughs> are you guys joint bank accounts? We do. Yeah. yeah you yeah. join everything. Everything. Yeah. Any prenups involved? No. No, we're just... We had nothing when we started. <laughs> well, that's... Dude, you still get a prenup. Yeah. yeah. What if you have something when you end? 
Well, then it's, we built it together. If you, well, you and in your guys' yeah. case, that would be true. Yeah. yeah. But in a lot of people's cases, the wife goes out and invents something and gets super rich dudes getting yeah. paid uh, yeah. and vice versa, vice which is usually what happens is the dude goes out and makes a big company and the girls yeah. get paid. But if you're all in love and it, you built it together, that's, that's admirable. Yeah, we're well, super, is, we're kind of weird. But if you don't yeah. listen to Kanye, he says, or I don't know if it's Con Kanye, who says get a prenup? I think that's Kanye. Isn't that Kanye? I think it's Kanye. He wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah, you know, he's driving uh, 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 Gold Digger. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah you, want a, you want a prenup. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. We want prenups. <laughs> yeah. So what we, like, what we, what happened was, I had the, I had the Arsenal K9 for probably about four years before we actually met. And I, so like I said, I came from a policing background. I'm not a business background. I knew nothing about policies, um, document like I, we documented stuff but it wasn't the same as what i should have been doing so when i met her um she complimented that that side of the business for me and before we even started dating we were kind of working together she was helping with some of the policies and the now when you were doing when you were doing that were you looking at her thinking dang i'd like to tag that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> now what were you thinking well i think we were we that personal relationship was there before the business relationship, I would say, well, it's kind of, it was kind of, it was kind of the same time. Yeah. But what were, you, what were you thinking? This is before y'all knew each other's like it were true intentions. Well, oh yeah. Well, she sure. added me on Facebook and then what I, were you thinking? Dude, I like this guy. Oh yeah, totally. I took, like I said, I added him on <laughs> Facebook. I just, I take advantage of every opportunity that I can get. So I was like, hmm, who's this guy? And now you're traveling all over yeah. training dogs. That's right. Yeah. Happy couple. Yeah. yeah. Book authors. Yeah. I don't think we've been, I don't think we've actually been apart for like longer than two hours since like Frick almost a year now. Yeah. Did you just say Frick? Frick. She said Frick. Frick. <laughs> is, that, is that short for fricking? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a Canadian thing. So I say, I see in your story here that you're also going to be, your next step is to start a security company. Well, that was at the time that we, we did this. So I went down, um, down to Florida in November and I took a, um, a hostage rescue uh, tactical SWAT course um, with a, a company, Israeli Tactical. Um, so we, we did a course and um, I learned some of that stuff. And then I was going to come back for the um, VIP protection side of it. But you like know, bodyguard and shit, mm -hmm. bodyguard stuff. But then I think, and you know, I, I don't really want to be the guy that's doing it. I'd rather just, not only that, why would you want to take a bullet for some motherfucker? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Cause yeah, a lot of times right. there, there is just some oh, fucking totally. rich, it's just some rich dude hiring you yeah. to protect him. Yeah. So yeah. You take the bullet, dude. I'll give you money. You take a bullet. Shit, yeah. you ain't paying me to take no. your bullet, bitch. If someone's out for you, they, they, they <laughs> ain't luck. going through me. Yeah. 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 So, we're, but we're hey, that's, that's why you got to respect bodyguards, police totally. officers, law yeah. enforcement, because, dude, they're, they're willing to stand in between. Mm -hmm. I forgot you're a cop. That's why. Yeah. No. So that's you know I'm a cop, FYI. I heard yes, that we yeah. heard you were sworn in. Well, I am a sworn officer, yeah. but I am not an active law enforcement mm -hmm. officer. Oh, I've never cool. even served one day. So just for the record, don't anyone think I'm claiming <laughs> that I was a cop. I was uh, given a, a badge yeah. and sworn in as an honorary police officer, but. Uh, I, I learned later from another uh, cop friend of mine that you shouldn't have been sworn in if you're honorary. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, but no, she swore me in. And, and they're like, well, are you sure? I'm like, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> and, and then I showed him the certificate and I showed him the video. And he goes, dude, like that makes you an actual police officer, sworn officer. Mm -hmm. I said, cool. I've always wanted to be one. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in the next car. Yeah. Well, no, I, it was out of Oroville, California. Yeah. So I'd have to be in Oroville first. Yeah. And secondly, it was honorary. Yeah. They, they, she had no intention of making me a police officer. <laughs> but anyway, so, the, you know, the, the long story short is you guys met. Mm -hmm. You happened to be dog trainer. He was also a dog trainer. And mm -hmm. you said, hey, let's merge this yep. deal. Yeah. And train dogs. Mm -hmm. And now you train dogs all over and for, for canine, for police, for protection, for, you know, yeah. not shitting on the floor, like yeah, all kinds of dogs, dogs. Yeah. for pet dogs too. We were just, we, 
we were in Florida just a little bit ago. I'm helping a guy train uh, a tracking dog because he's going to be going to Africa um, for poachers detection uh, of tracking. So to find poachers. Uh, interesting fact. I know you like rhinos. There was 448 rhinos poached last year. Um, and only about 106, 130 some arrests for poachers in Africa. Mm. So there's an, an initiative, big initiative going on right now. There's a lot of uh, people from North America heading over there to help train these dogs to, you know, track poachers. So, so, so I was, you, keep going. Yeah. So I was helping this guy. Um, he's, he's been invited to go next year if he can get all qualified and certified. So um, that's what we were doing in, in Florida for, I don't know what, two weeks. So yeah, getting him yeah. going. So yeah. So the stuff like that. That's Are you both out there helping? Yeah. Yeah. He does more. I like doing the business stuff, but uh, I, I'll help a lot with the, I'll help when it's needed for the working dog and stuff. But so the, yeah. re, well, the reason I ask is because it seems like with your background and everything that you, you just train dogs to f sniff drugs and <laughs> detect bombs and shit. No, you, you, no. you you'll teach a poodle how to not, you know, yeah. piss on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Puppy training or what do you call it? Potty training. Body training, yeah. yeah. Obedience breaking. training, yes. house breaking. Basically, like what we like to do is, our our specialty is what I call real life results. So it's not, you know, it's not about like super fancy shit and spins and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we can, but that's not what we specialize in. We specialize in having people, like you were just saying, being able to take their dogs out and enjoy their dogs in all these different locations. Knowing right? they'll behave. Knowing they'll yeah. behave, like walk beside me, you know, you're not, they're not, you know, blowing you off and not coming back to you, right? Like just those fundament, the fundamentals in, you know, having a dog so that you can take them yeah, anywhere. Yeah, like one time I, I, I did take my dog places before. Mm -hmm. And one time, you know, I had it on the leash and it, the leash, the leash wasn't one of those chokers, so it was kind of loose. Mm -hmm. She pulled her head out of it and started running towards the street. I had a heart attack. Oh, yeah. I thought she was yeah. going to get crushed by a car. I'm yeah. calling her to get over there. She's not listening. It's like, come on. And then, you know, another time, uh, another dog came around and, and uh, my dog tore out after it. Like, like you know, what do mm -hmm. you do? It's like, dude, you just leave him at home. Yeah. Or it, train them. Or train them. Yeah. Because we, we were actually, we went and I'm going to use uh, Andy Elliott thing. We battle tested these dogs. So our dogs, we took them out to Miami to the Brickle area down in Miami Beach. Had these dogs uh, off leash, um, walking around, tons of people, tons of cars, you know, took them on the uh, patio had them under the chairs while we yeah, but they're you know, trained they're trained exactly yeah. so Through we the wanted system so here's we, the yeah. thing yeah. now i know you have a uh a training system an online training system is that yeah. done yeah it is done yeah to where to where an average joe can log in and have you guys pop up and train them on demand basically on all these things mm -hmm. exactly even yeah. even uh bite work uh we haven't got a bite work one yet we're going to be the next ones we're going to be adding is going to be tracking yeah, well most people aren't looking to train their dogs to bite no. they're, they're looking for the stuff you got yeah. yeah what about shake hands play dead roll over stuff like that no we don't have those tricks yet why we're not getting, we're getting there dude getting i want to get my dog to shake hands we how just, do i do it we just launched <laughs> we actually we're going through light speed right so we've got two pup two programs right now uh we have our puppy program which that's is the best one yeah that's mm -hmm. going to be the one that gets your dog the confidence um you Keeps know, build that relationship with floor. you. What's that? Is it housebreaking? Yeah, there's housebreaking involved in that one. Yeah, because uh, here's the problems with dogs. Most people, most regular people, they'll get a dog. They don't know how to housebreak it. Mm -hmm. They start pissing and shitting all over the house. They get yeah. tired of the dog, frustrated with the dog, start yelling at the dog, and it just you know mm -hmm. ends up not as well. Yeah. Where if the pet store would give somebody like a, a virtual training like yours to take home. And then once you've gone through the puppy training, then you get to pick up your puppy. Yeah. We should do that with human babies too. We should. Mm -hmm. We should. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, well, that's what I think. Yeah. So I'm going to give everyone a tip out there. If you're getting a puppy, the best way to housebreak your dog without even getting a trainer is keep it on a leash 100% of the time. That's it. People don't like it. People don't like it because <laughs> you're, you're dragging your dog around the house. Um, if your dog why would on, that work? Well, because if your dog's on a leash, it's not chewing anything because you can see it. It's not going to pee anywhere because you're right there. You can take it outside what, when you see the signs. But if they, if they start to piss, you just yank them outside? Take them outside. You'll right start, away. like, little signs you'll start noticing, too, like sniffing, things like that. They'll, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit distracted, and then you pop outside. And we have one puppy right now. She's a black lab. If she has to poop, 
she just starts spinning in circles and, and like full 100% spinning in circles and running. And then she all of a sudden just dead stop and go. Well, I wish, I wish like mine gave signs like that. Yeah. <laughs> mine looks fine. I say, you want to go outside? There's no noise. I go walk into the bathroom. I come back out. There's shit on the floor. Now this was before. Because mm -hmm. I did, uh, I don't know if it, if it's appropriate, but I did the old fashioned potty training or house breaking. Is that what you call it? House breaking? House breaking. Mm -hmm. I did the old fashioned my dad taught me. And that's Shut where you grab the dog by the back of the neck and you smash his face near or in the shit. And then you smack its ass and you throw it outside. Yeah. It works though. Well, I don't know if it, <laughs> I don't know if it works or if it works. My dog quit shitting in the house. <laughs> it could have been something else, but I think dogs typically run on a three second loop. So by the time that you notice, I mean, if, unless you're catching them, they shit and then you're putting their nose in it right away. They don't really associate that with it. They just think you're being a dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, that's, but, but that's interesting for people to understand. Yeah, it yeah. is. Like, so Cause like you're yeah. thinking they know. And by the way, I, I might have to disagree with you. I know where you're going with this. Well, that's I because know. my dog, you know, when she did something she shouldn't have done. Cause when you walk into the room, she goes and she's looking around all freaking worried and shit. And then you're like, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then you look, Oh, I see what you did. She knows what she did. Mm hmm. And she knows it was wrong or she wouldn't be doing this. And it's like long after she's done it. Well, there is associated behaviors like that. So if you've ever caught her doing something like that before, and then you walk in the room, then she's going to be associating what happened the previous time. <clears throat> so it's, well, that's, that's probably why she stopped doing it. Cause now she really doesn't. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but sometimes, uh, you know, I will see a big puddle of piss on the floor and it, we have two small dogs and a large one. So when the, the piss size is usually what gives it away and the yeah. shit size definitely gives it away <laughs> yeah. who did what. Yeah. So sometimes I'll go in and there's a large piss puddle mm -hmm. and it's like. You know, I want to get mad, but you know, how can you get mad? You didn't let it out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but my dog won't bark to be let out either. Yeah. That's where you like having that routine. So setting them up on a routine when they get up, let them out. If they're sleeping and they wake up, let them out. If they eat, let them out, you know, 10 minutes later, what if they don't want to go out. I, I'd wait. Like I personally wait them out. I'd wait them out outside. Sometimes you can do like little tricks where you come back in for like a minute Cause you, it'll happen. You hear people all the time. Like I let my dog out 10 minutes, did nothing. I came back in a minute later, they pooped in the house. Right. So I do like a little trick where I'll come in and then, you know, one minute and then back right outside again. And then waiting. The nice thing is, is if you start it early enough with that routine and you get them going outside and then, you know, you can do things like rewarding that behavior, let them go outside and then, you know, reward with food or reward with pets. Now it's kind of like a trick, right? And they're like, okay, I'm going to go out, um, go out, pee, do my thing. And then I can come back in and play. Right. And so then you can put a name to it or a command to it. And then you have their dog going poop on command or pee on command. So yeah, you just, it's just all about consistency and routine. So if I take your training online, your online training Academy, mm -hmm. you, I'll learn how to do that myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yeah. pretty strong. Yeah. yeah. Or, or I can just send the dog to you or you can send mm -hmm. it to us. Yeah. We, so what we're trying to do now is we're trying to, we find that Lightspeed is such a good program and it, it has so many features that we can utilize with the training that we're trying to, we, we would prefer a lot of people go to, um, to the online training because that way it's repetitive. Like they have access to the program for life, right? So and if they get, forget and something, and it gets them up to speed quicker. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we find that because a lot of people, when they come to us, I talked about this before, they don't follow through with it, right? So we spend a month training the dog and then we tell, we teach people how to follow through with it. And most people don't. So we find that if we have a lower price point um, with the VT system, they're learning how to do it as long as they don't have huge behavior problems with their dogs. If it's just your, your everyday, um, you need you get your dog out into real life situations mm -hmm. and that kind of good obedience, then the light speed is going to be the way to go because then you have access to that training for life. And you can also upgrade and you can have the zoom calls with, with us and our, our trainers as well. So, um, if you're having issues with something, you can, you know, get that as part of the package. So anybody having a dog problem, there's, this is your solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if anybody you're having a business problem, 
these guys started it from scratch. <laughs> We did. We almost died coming to meet. Well, not me. He almost died, I almost coming, died to meet coming to meet you. Why? Right, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is, so this this is a funny. So, so back uh, when you did that weekend MBA um, yeah. in, I April. didn't do it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, you were there. You see the next one that's coming up? No, I didn't see an email for it, but I didn't. Yeah. So yeah. Back yeah. in that time, uh, COVID was. Like Canada the, was cool, crazy. the rules in in Canada. I think it was because of the weekend NBA the COVID happened. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> but we. we I don't know because get it's getting there. Yeah, we couldn't. Anyways, yeah. yeah, we weren't allowed to leave the country in Canada if we weren't had that you know jibby jab yeah. thing, right? So we weren't allowed to leave the country. So I don't know how many times I was on the phone with your staff, being like, "Is this refundable? Like, if I don't get across the border, can I get my money back?" Because <laughs> they came and asked me that, and I said, "Yeah, if, they, if he <laughs> yeah, can't get the really? damn yeah. permission to come, we'll give him like that." Because <laughs> we we we're not like we didn't want the the base ticket right we wanted the I, I don't know we i started listening to you probably about two years ago and you were the only podcast i ever listened to and i i told jenna i said i'm going to be on that podcast one day and here you are and yeah. here i am Boom. so we were uh yeah we we had this this goal to get here so we bought the vip tickets because right? we're not yeah we're not just going to be in the back like we got to yeah. be at the front we wanted to meet our biggest goal coming down was you know, like, you know, with relationships, right? Is meeting people, because at that time in our life, it was just us, like our circles. I mean, like you said, you love your family, but you know, they're like, you guys are crazy. You're doing this. Like, yeah. why are you guys doing this? Why are you guys doing that? Yeah. yeah right? what, like, we What's got your that. real job going to be? Yeah. What's your real job? Or like, yeah. what if this doesn't work out? And yeah. all this, like, that was our constant. Like, I think we cleaned yeah. out our circle hard last year. And so, so, you, so you cleaned out your circle. See, these are yeah. lessons. Yeah. This yes. is an entrepreneur's podcast, yeah. kind of. So those are the lessons we want to, yeah. Yeah. We, we aren't here to teach people how to do the dogs, but <laughs> no. if you need the dogs, Dogs, they yeah. got gotcha. you exactly. No, so Jenna sold a bunch of feet pictures to get us the money. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, why? Yeah. That's a joke. No, are your feet good? <laughs> yeah. always, I mean, they're nice, but no. <laughs> can you imagine someone having a fetish with feet? Because there oh. are, yeah, they are. That's people. you that's see these the videos country. all the time of these people making money, but yeah, but that's, that's worst case scenario. If none of this you know works out, then we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll look only that fans. way. Only feet, only fans page. Yeah, yeah there you there go. go. Just so, feet, yeah. so you got rid of a lot of negative people and crap. Yeah, how'd yeah. that work out? Uh, it, was, it was it was tough, you know. Tougher for him than it me. It was tougher for me. <coughs> I had you know, there's friends that people I'd been friends with for a long time um, that we had to just cut ties with because it was there was always that negativity there, and and any time that I would try and progress, it was like, well, maybe you're going too fast, or maybe you're doing this. Like we have uh, it within. You know what they're doing? They're casting their limitations and doubts onto you. Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. And within three years, I had, uh, well, now we're up to like five locations in Western Canada for, for actual physical training, physical yeah. training businesses. So I, I expanded very fast because the need was there. And um, so, yeah, so like I said, we had to get rid of some people in our lives and um, B business and personal. Like we yeah. cleaned out a lot in the business, too, because they like just like um, culture reasons right yeah. so but yeah so we were at this point where we we're like we need to meet people that are already like you know steps ahead of us so that we know like what to aim for and you know have have people that we can bounce things off of like hey this is what we're going through right we got a lot of you know new things popping up and we're like how mm -hmm. how else do you meet people like that well you got to go you know, invest some money in events. So yep. we didn't want to be in the back row. We didn't, we wanted to be like front row. So we were like, we're like, we're committing to this hundred yep. percent. We are going to get across this border. We don't know how, but uh, <laughs> we'll figure it out. So, and yeah, like we, everything, like our flights and all that. Cause what we basically, was it? It was the weekend NBA in, oh. in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't even my event. <laughs> yes. You were no. there. And you that's were there. the reason why we were going. Well, yeah. I was there and, and, yeah. and it looked like my event and everyone kind of thought it was my event, but it wasn't my event. But you know what, Brad, you, I know you had some, you, you said in the, in your event there, in the event that there were some issues with it that you, you know, wish you could have changed or you didn't like or whatever. But for us being there as first It was a time, pivotal moment It was a pivotal, yeah. pivotal moment for us. Mm -hmm. So Or that whole like, event. So yeah. It was so it huge. worked well. Yeah, it did. It did, but it was crazy getting there. So I'll let well, you. Well, I always, I always downplay anything anyway. Like somebody yeah. comes up to me sometimes, they're like, "Dude, you changed my life," and in my head, I'm thinking, "Dude, seriously, like that." To me, that's a major thing. Mm -hmm. I so I said, "What did I say? <laughs> you know, what 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 was so life changing?" Yeah. 
And, you know, on a couple occasions, they tell me something. I was like, damn, I, I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking the weekend NBA, there was a shitty hotel. It's mm-hmm. like, what the hell is this? And you guys weren't even thinking that. No, no. no. See, so sometimes we got to stop <laughs> thinking about totally. what yeah. we think and start worrying about what other people think. Exactly. Yeah. But I always try to do the diff- the opposite. Like, I don't I don't, don't care, care what, what people, people think. think. Yeah. yeah. But I kind of do or I wouldn't have been making up excuses of, of, of <laughs> yeah. why we we're at that, whatever that was, that yeah. hotel. Yeah. Which it wasn't bad. But again, like I had people literally walk up and they're like, you know, as soon as I said, oh, no, this isn't my event, because it really wasn't my event. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was helping the guy put it on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean, that Sean sure. guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, anyway, long story short, that was awesome. So how did you almost die coming to see me? So I started feeling sick a couple days before we were going. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background. Back when I was seven years old, um, I had been diagnosed with what they call uh, portal hypertension. So it means I have, uh, sometimes I'll grow varicose veins in my esophagus and stomach, and then they'll burst. So when I was seven years old, they burst, and I ended up vomiting blood all over my mom's bed. and my mom and buckets full like ice cream pails full of blood. like a viewer discretion by the way if people get grossed out really easily. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so anyway so that was the very first time it ever happened um i had blood transfusions i almost died blah 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 whatever it's, it's happened a few times since not to that extreme um but very close so um i don't know if you know what hemoglobin is sure i sure i do yeah so my heme so typically a male's hemoglobin is going to be about 165 um mine typically when that happens gets down to about 70 and then they say under 70 is blood transfusion right so when uh, so i started feeling sick uh, this hadn't happened for probably about five to seven years or so so before we were going i started feeling sick i was bloated i could tell something was wrong but this was something like she's she's a business she wanted to go to this i'm like i can't act like it's something serious right so i didn't even tell her what was going on i had on. no idea i just thought we were sick. just dating at the time we weren't even married right so at the weekend mba yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah so so i'm like okay um, I'm just going to push through, push through, push through. So I, I had checked and made sure I had health insurance. If something ever ha- something happened in the States. And, um, so we ended up, I, I told her I'm sick. I don't, I don't feel well. She's like, okay, well just get us across the border yeah, <laughs> because like, I do better under that kind of situation. Like that. So we're not going to, we're just going to bypass the whole border thing and yeah. then move on to, because we're actually going to court in Four Canada days. when we get back for leaving the country. So we got to go to court, but so because because they because they didn't want you to they didn't want us to yeah and we did I wonder yeah. why isn't that yeah. weird That's, oh i know yeah so good old canada <laughs> anyways <laughs> anyway so as soon as we got over the border i shut it down i'm like i can't drive anymore like I was he's like to get gray weak. like he looked dead he's like gray i'm like <laughs> okay he's sick yeah so she drove i slept for probably almost 10 hours I think and then we mm-hmm. stopped in I, I woke up and I'm like uh, we were in Idaho Falls and I'm like we gotta stop I feel sick like I need to like chill out and and just be somewhere so I don't die right and she still just thinks I'm sick I didn't tell her what I know <laughs> so we get to, we get this motel six in Idaho Falls and I'm like I, I gotta have a bath I'm just gonna relax in the tub and and uh, I'll be fine and she's she's worried so we get the bath ready and she's sitting there talking to me and then she's like, are you gonna be okay? I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. So she gets up and leaves the bathroom and then what was it like 30 seconds? Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds. All of a sudden I hear like, it sounded like choking. I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I get up off the bed and I go around the corner and into the bathroom and I'm looking, I see the mirror first and he is like projectile vomiting like black. Like, cause so blood when it's old is like, co- looks like coffee grounds. Right. So it's basically black, like hitting the opposite side of the, <laughs> the tub. Sorry for anyone that gets like squeamish easy, but so he's like, he's vomiting. So I'm like, holy shit. So I run up to him and I get there and he's unconscious. Like he's not even conscious. His pupils are like pinpoint. Um, and he had just stopped puking at that time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be this is going to be expensive. Wait, wait. And I'm like, he's not, I'm like, okay, you, if he doesn't come to in like the next five seconds, I'm calling 911 and he, he's out of it. And I'm like the most like calm person. I don't, I don't smack people. And I'm like, 
boom, like, wake up, <laughs> wake up. And uh, I'm thinking like, you know, he's going to start choking on his puke. So I'm thinking of how I got to get him on his side. And so he finally comes to, and again, like he, he looked like I was looking at a dead person. Like he was gray. There was nothing in him. And he just like, what happened? And I'm like, he, there's like, pu- everything is everywhere in this tub. Right. And I'm like, what just happened? Old blood, new blood. Yeah. It was just, yeah. Yeah. So he's just like totally out of it. And then that was it. And well, then, yeah. So he like, basically, so yeah, we're like, I had to do is puke up the blood. And you, you were fine. Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So basically what the biggest issue with this is when he has these like spells go on, they like, they heal they'll they'll clot right and they heal up so by the time he ever really gets to the hospital it's starting to heal up and they can't you know they'll tie off a few of them but you know and that just clots up and stops what what condition is that called that was it was called portal hypertension yeah there's not really too too much known about it it's they think it came from an infection an umbilical infection when i was born but But they don't know he should have went to the hospital so she was (laughs) she was trying to get me to go to the hospital i'm like i'm not going to the hospital like this is gonna be too much we got we got to catch our flights because we had already booked flights from salt lake because we drove across to fly from salt lake to miami so we're we're we got to catch our flight we got to get it so i said if i'm not well in the morning if i don't feel well in the morning we'll go to the hospital and then I wasn't going to tell her that even no matter how I felt that we weren't going to the hospital. <laughs> so, um, I can't make you do anything cause yeah. she's you're stubborn. I guess she was up all night. I slept fine. Yeah. Cause I'm worried he's going to start puking and then choke and die. So I'm like sitting up the whole night, just watching him. And yeah, yeah we woke up the next morning and he hadn't puked. He was fine. And then fine quotations. And then we caught her flight and yeah went down and yeah he was still like pale but it was starting to look you know yeah. slowly becoming better but uh so my I'm, I'm gonna guess my hemoglobin was close to like 70 80 something like that so i'm i'm dragging ass i'm tired and um <laughs> we we get there we're we had to get to the front row so we were in the front row yeah. and uh you know relaxing until day two um <laughs> where <laughs> Andy Elliott comes out, <laughs> takes our front row seat. Yeah, we're like, who are these people? The they just pull Elliot. up a full, a full row. Push us back. And then Andy gets up on stage. He starts yelling at everybody, telling everybody how they're chair. lazy and disrespectful <laughs> for sitting down. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got to stand up. I'm just so tired. <laughs> I can barely stand. I'm holding like the zombie. chair. And I'm like, OK. And he keeps going on and on and on. I'm like, I got to Oh, he sit. went on and on. Yeah, he did. I got to sit. And then I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy. Did you <laughs> tell him the story? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So I never sat the whole time. And, and he was done and yeah that was and then by that I started to feel better after all that so I always make fun of people that tell people to stand up and he's the opposite he's like you know they gotta wake up yeah you know I'm like dude like chill because if you do it to me I ain't standing up and if you and if you embarrass me I just leave you yeah know? like I went to a Tony Robbins event uh to audit Tony's courses because we were going to make VT courses Mm -hmm. and he had me front row and it was cold as shit and they kept having me do these dumb things with people like interactions like massage each other and scream in each other's face and all this weird shit. I don't like it. So I just kept going to the bathroom, yeah. going to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom every, every hour and a half. I'd go to the bathroom. Yeah. Um, but you know, okay, everybody get up, everybody get up. I'm like, I do the same thing. Oh God. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I, if I didn't have Andy speak there, then you wouldn't have known Andy though. Well, exactly. Well, we met great connections. Are we Christy code red? We, we met were her sitting there. beside her. Christy yeah. code red's a badass. Yeah. yeah Cause we, I remember it was so funny because she's sitting beside me and I'm like, you know, who's this lady? She, she spent money to be there too. Yeah. yeah. And then she, and then you went on stage and you're like, you know, it's crazy seeing badasses like, you know, Christy here at these events. And then I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> but yeah. you know, like she, that was, she crushes it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. She came and talked to us in one of the intermissions there and we ended up taking her dog. We, she sent us her dog for, for a month and we trained her dog and, um, we're good friends with her now. Yeah, nice. we're nice. yeah, you got business from going. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Totally. And, and probably all of that will eventually or already has led up to far more than you spent to get there. Exactly. 100%. And See, that's it what was, people don't understand. Like, yeah. you know, I ain't paying that much to be there. Dude, if if you show up at these events and you introduce yourself and you start meeting people and you network and you build relationships, it pays for the event. A hundred percent. 
million times more. Too. Yes, that ne- that network. But there's is. there's a lot of people that they don't think like you. They sit in the back of the room. Mm-hmm. They don't go VIP, so they're not in those rooms meeting people intimately. They're just watching the speakers. They hear what they say. They take their notes and then they leave quietly. They don't talk to anyone else that's at the event. They don't build relationships. Yeah. I feel bad for them because that's not what those events are about. No. Yeah. Those events are what I tell people to do is worry more about who's in the audience than who's on the stage. Like who cares who's on the stage? You, mm-hmm. you, you listen to the person on stage. I bet you you Google them and follow them. You're going to hear the same shit they already said before. Yeah. You're just going to hear it in a different way on a stage. Yeah. Like I want to know who's, who's sitting next to me. Why are they here? What, what they're trying to grow? Like I'm trying to grow shit. We need to know each other. Yeah. And, yeah, I'd, totally. and I'd be hand gladdened and introducing myself. Oh, and by the sure. time I left there, I'd know everybody that went there and I'd get so much freaking value out of that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, we met a couple like Maddie Washington. Matt oh yeah. Washington. Maddie. Yeah. How, how, so, so how did you guys know to do this? Or you just accidentally, naturally did it. We just <laughs> did. We just started talking yeah. to people. Because you're just friendly Canadians. Exactly. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> I asked the question. I asked, um, I can't remember who it was about uh, personal branding. I had stood up and asked a question about my brand. And um, then after that, people started coming up to us. And then we, you know, that kind of broke the ice a little bit. Because I kind of put myself out there to go yeah. ask the question. I was We'd- so nervous to ask this. I thought it was a stupid question. But I, Why do you I have want- two dogs kissing as your logo? Two dogs kissing. Where? What are they doing? Your logo. Oh yeah, this one. I don't know. They're just together. <laughs> they're, they love each other. They're just meeting in the middle. Leaf. This is this is the one that uh, that can go embroidery. The other one's cooler. It's more detailed design. But yeah, is, we'll is that you. a maple leaf? Yeah, it is. Because you because you love Canada so much. No, we, we got we got an American we one have an now. American version. Are you guys moving here? We're trying We're to. We're trying. Yeah. Does that require permission from both governments? Well, we need to do, uh, um, once we open, we need an E2 visa. So um, that gives us the ability to manage, and then we have to hire an American employee, at least one American employee. So I want to go to Florida. Well, that's easy. You want to move to Florida? Mm-hmm. What about you? It's too hot there for me. <laughs> and muggy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> she likes it there, but yeah. you know, I'll probably end DeSantis up, that's is pretty good too. What is it? DeSantis over there. Oh yeah. I like yeah. DeSantis. Yeah. yeah. We'll probably end up there because she, you know, she's the boss. How am I going to say no to her? I trained him well. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. See, so because you should do a course on training men. Oh, well, I've been, I've been told that he, he was, he was a walking commitment we'll, issue when we'll, I met him. We'll so believe, now he's, believe it or not, I think it would sell. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been. Well, we cracked the code for training dogs, but I think she's cracked the code for training me anyway. I can't train a spouse. I've had a couple of them and they didn't stick around. So. You know, and, and you guys, again, listen, you, you, I, not for nothing, but you, you guys are figuring it out as you go and, yeah. and you're growing. You got five locations. You got an online training system, which they could go berserk. Yes. Because, I mean, there's millions and millions of dog owners. Mm-hmm. So you guys realize it, all you have to do is let them understand what who you are and what mm-hmm. you do. And you could theoretically and potentially sell millions of passwords. Yeah. Now, will it be likely? Well, no, because I don't think millions and millions of people will ever know who you are. Mm-hmm. Unless you advertise, yeah. unless you market, unless you get out on those stages, unless you do shit like Andy would like that shit's going viral with Andy. But I don't know. I didn't read the the subtitles to see, oh, that's the, them. And how do I get a hold yeah. of them? But it was cool. Mm-hmm. So like you guys could, you know, build a personal brand with those dogs. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'm well, telling you, you got a big thing on your hands. Well, we hired, uh, we actually hired the Elliott group to help us with our marketing. And we're actually the CRM. I think that's real financial, isn't it? The CRM real system relationship. Yeah. Real relationships. Yeah. So that's how, you know, that's what we're moving everything towards um, the Elliott group and what you guys do. Cause like it's just done we're so just, well. Yeah. Just full yeah. in and like, like figure it out as you go. But yeah. I don't know. It's, we, you have to take that risk. So you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much. Nice. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was for both of you. Yeah. Nice. There you go. I don't Good know who one. won the, the bomb bat. Well, I don't know. I think I'm a two. You're a one. I don't know. Probably you. No. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So yeah. let, me give, let me give you a chance. What's one thing you would tell any business uh, owner or entrepreneur that's getting started that's like this far from giving up because they just keep getting hit after another with problems and situations? What would you tell them? Uh, keep keep pushing because once you get past that point, there's something new, something good that's on the way. That's what everyone would say. That's, I mean, dig uh, deeper. (laughs) Dig deeper. Don't have a plan B. 
Yes. Burn the ships. Yeah. Burn the ships. What's yours? You gotta. I'm now. I'm thinking on it. So, what would I? What would I? Drop a bomb on them. I know. So you're. You're someone that is going through something, you're getting hit. No, you're trying to build a business, man, but you've been hit so many times, you know, you're about to give up. What do you I don't know. Them? I think that, that, <laughs> here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that like boundary you hit when you're about to give up is like, once you cross that, once you keep pushing that, I think that's when everything explodes in a good way. You know, that's when you break through and have, um, like the breakthrough. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, because it is like, we, but we, but that's keep going, isn't it? That is, yeah. it is keep going. I guess it's all going to depend yeah, see, on your situation, see, but that's right? The same. But so, you got so to yeah, find someone that's going to be able to help you along your journey. I think. Hey, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. yeah. What's that? You got to find someone that, that can help you. There we go. Okay, there you go. Now, now it's two two. I think. Okay. See, some, I, I feel but that's, like you but that's that right. See, everyone mm-hmm. will say, you know, you keep going, dude. You just keep going. Well, dude, no shit. Everybody knows that problem is nobody does it. Why? Well, because they don't have anybody holding them accountable. Yes. They don't reach out and find somebody else to, that have already been there and done that to kind of coach them through it. And that's what people, a lot of people should do. Yeah. If someone told me that they were ready to give up, I tell them, you know, ultimately, dude, go find somebody that you want to be like, in mm-hmm. other words, I, I, I want to be this. Okay, yeah. good. Go find someone who's already that. Yeah. And you pay them, do whatever you need to do to get those guys to freaking walk you through these times because mm-hmm. we all have them. Mm-hmm. It's not, they're not singled out. Like I had, a t- dude, it took me eight years to build yeah. a, a company. Now I can build companies quicker because of my personal brand and because of my experience and because, mm-hmm. you know, all these other reasons. But I, 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 dude, most people would have given up after eight years. How long did it take you before you guys started getting some traction? I don't well, know. We were, we were doing the doubling thing. Um, so every year we'd kind of double up on what I was with the revenue that we were making. I think that's I think, good. That's good. I feel yeah. like we're just starting to get where it's like, going to come out. We're like, just starting to get this traction. Like I'm, mm. I'm super excited. How to long see. has it been then? This will, we're coming into our fifth year. See what I'm For saying? Him? Five yeah. years, dude. Most people yeah. give up after five years. Yeah. yeah. They go, Oh, I ain't doing this. I, it took me eight. Most people quit after a couple months. Mm-hmm. Well, we've done yeah. a lot of like adjusting along the way. It's yeah. like calling yeah. an audible. Um, because we've we've had to shut different locations down, or um, we've run into problems where some of our trainers or managers get sick, and then we have to adjust and figure out what to do there. Or, like Jenna alluded to before, the culture in mm-hmm. one location, we got rid of everybody yeah, and had to have. start from scratch. Yeah. What if someone got bit at your facility? Is not a liability. We have insurance. Yeah. So insurance would pay that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is ha- like that's where having the the training and stuff to make sure that you're trying to avoid those bites. Yeah. But and so that's another thing we're doing with with the Lightspeed too is we're creating um, an online training platform for trainers. So what we want to do, we want to our eventual goal is we want to get into training training Doctors. trainers or trainer training companies, right? Because we have this platform now that uh, that'll be able to do it. What about mm-hmm. a password with the dog? Like you make me a dog and you give me a password with the dog. A password with it, yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. Like instead of a owner's manual, yep. you just give me a password. So it's a digital, a digital owner's manual for the dog. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Tell me that might be revolutionary yeah. right there. There you go. I'll and again, they should do it with human babies too. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we brought our baby home for the first time. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. We had to call grandma and grandpa and, you know, ask around and find mm-hmm. other people that have already done it. Yeah. You know, because a couple of times it's like, dude, they, one time baby was crying and crying and crying. And I thought, frick, let's take it to the hospital. Mm-hmm. It's crying. It's, too, it's crying too much. Babies cry. Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, yeah. we didn't even know that. Same yeah. with puppies in a crate. I almost gave it up for adoption. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong. Yeah. We, no. I, I've got a book, actually. I've finished writing it now. It's just getting edited. It's pretty much a manual on how to choose the proper dog for your lifestyle. Because that's a huge thing, too, is choosing the right dog. Because a lot of people, they see these dogs and they're cool, but they don't necessarily suit their lifestyle. Yeah. Right? Like Malinois. That's, that's everyone, when you get a cat. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants a Malinois until they have one. And then, you know, for the... 
the most like again you're gonna have exceptions to the rule but for most <laughs> yeah for most dogs they're you know they need a lot of activity and they yeah, but need, mine's mine's cool yeah yeah like like yeah, in other words she when i get home sometimes she gets so excited she'll like you know Chatter. like yeah. malingator yeah they call them malingators malingator I, yeah. I was wondering if that's why it's just, yeah, it's just that. They're just they're the butt, yeah. Exciting. Well, you said chatter like that's a normal thing. Yeah, for Malinois. I, I find it. Yeah, so when I get home, she'll, and, and, yeah. and she'll try to freaking snip my face. Like, yeah. she's just so excited. Yeah. She just wants to bite me. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, it's genetic, right? It's there. Like, we, when we breed these Malinois puppies at like six weeks old, like, they're ripping your clothes. This is no training. This is pure genetics, right? These puppies are like shredding your clothes and they're just, the, yeah, that well, genetics. If I put there. on the bite sleeve, dude, she'll go after it. Do you want to yeah. put on the bite sleeve? We got one here and I got my dog that uh, Andy was scared to outside. Take away from. Yeah. Oh um, no, we, we can do it go. another day. I have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> See, Andy, there might the be people thing. here that do though. Yeah, I mean, people get yeah. off on that. I, I, dude, I don't want a dog biting me. I don't care if I got a sleeve on it or not. Especially the one I saw you. He was ripping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. thing wanted to pull somebody down. Yeah. Yes. But she, you know, what's funny though, is it just goes to show how you can have these level headed dogs. Cause you let her off and then she'll go up to everyone and yeah, pet me, love me. Like there's a balance there. She's stable. And that's, that's what you mm. want. Is that in a your dog? dog? That's my dog. Yeah. Yeah. And what's Sarah her name? Connor. Huh? Sarah, Sarah Connor. Connor. Yeah. Why yeah. Sarah Connor? Uh, just Arnold Schwarzenegger. What do you call Terminator her? Fan. Sarah. I just call her Sarah. Yeah. But she, again, sweet dog, but she'll, she'll do the game. She'll play the game because that's just like genetically they want to bite. Right. So, so I, I interrupted you though. You were saying something about the Malinois. What See, that's that? why I interrupt. Cause I'll forget if I don't I know. Yeah. And then, and then when I, I interrupt, know, and I'm trying to remember the track I'm on, well, I think she was for genetics for uh, people, oh, people picking, the, picking right the, right the right dogs. Yes. Yeah. Like it's lifestyle. Exactly. The lifestyle. What, what about if you're gone a lot? What's the best dog? <laughs> If you want to take him with you, a Chihuahua. <laughs> no, I mean, like, if you're gone a lot, like a like cat. A cat. Yeah. That's the best dog. Yeah, exactly. If you're gone a lot. Yeah. Well, it's and that's cat. the thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why, like, you know, with the light speed, what we want, like, we have all these people coming up to us and they can't, they have these dogs and they can't live with these dogs. Like you said, like most people don't get dogs to leave them at home to do nothing with them. Most people want that companionship, right? Yeah. So that's. Like we'd have so many, cause we like, we enjoy traveling. So that's again, why we make me want to go get my dogs. Yeah. yeah I want to, I want to see her. What's yeah, today? We, the 25th, 24th, 4th. Yeah. So we paid till the 26th. I was going to leave them there till the 26th, but I'll probably go get them tonight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll go see her. But, uh, um, yeah. So we'd have all these people come up to us saying, you know, like, Oh, can you help me? Can you help? And we only had these physical locations in Canada and mo like, yeah, Christy code red can probably send her dog to us in Canada, but most people can't, can't, can't do that kind yeah. of stuff. Right. So we wanted to have this program where people can you want to help more people is the whole point of this. Exactly. This system, like right? learn, learn what to do. And then just like every, like it's just the same stuff you preach, right. Getting the skill sets and then getting the habits, right. It's the same stuff with dog training. Like it's crazy how, how similar they are because, you know, get the skills, learn how to do it and then just make it a habit every day. And then eventually it's not, it is, doesn't end up being so much work. It's not like, Oh, I'm training now. It's my dog's already doing it and you're just maintaining it. Right. I think a lot of people do think that, ugh, I have to, it's just like the gym. I think for a lot of people, you know, at the start, you know, and even for us, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to go to the gym. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But then you just, you force yourself into the habit of it. You make it a habit. And then eventually it's not as, you know, you start seeing your results. You start seeing all the benefits it of it. Fun. It's not, you know, not yep. as painful. So I think training is the same way. It's yeah. At the start, it's, you know, there's, there's a few people out there that are super passionate about it and you know, it's, they're a different story, but for most people, it's a chore. It's, you know, you gotta, you gotta go out there and make sure your dog's doing what it's supposed to do and communicating with the dog well. But, uh, once you get in the habit of it, like the dog wants to do that and they dogs like having that black and white, like understanding of what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. Right. So once you've established that, then, you know, it gets a lot easier. So do you ever, do you ever get dogs that are like untamable? Un well, they are to other people, I guess, but not to us. Well, you, can, you can train any dog. You're the dog whisperer now. Well, that's yeah. I mean, yeah. You get a like dog said, that bites we, everybody and calm it down and teach it not to bite. Yes. Basically, yeah. Basically, all it takes you need you need to build a relationship with a dog, and you need to have clear communication. Right? Mm -hmm. We talked about this. Yeah, that's we like were, that's like a human too. It is, is exactly. We were just talking about it. We're like it is. You know, 
I think everyone out there loves their dog. There's no doubt about it. I think most people that get dogs love their well, dogs. Not everyone, because you see these abusing pieces of shit. Yeah. With the dogs in the back, tied up, no food, hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know those, I, the PCA or I forget. SPCA. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I watched a show one time where they would go around and bust people. Yeah. And there's some dicks out there yeah. mistreating their animals. Yeah. Like, dude, if, you, if you're going to be a, that piece of a shit, yeah. give it up for adoption. I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. Those ones are those ones are assholes for sure. And like, it's there. But the people, most I think, people, love I think most, most people. people, like we want that companion and, you know, they love their dogs. And, you know, I was just telling Jason this. I'm like, you know, just like in human relationships, love is not enough like that's yeah it's cool you can love someone or you can love your dog but is that enough to maintain that relationship no. usually not right you it's also communication have to do many other things yeah. yeah communication i would say is a big one and then respect right that that this is my advice i guess for spouses of <laughs> what worked on him but is respect i think that is a huge thing that is missing and why a lot of people's relationships with humans and dogs fail is that should lack be, of respect that's yeah. okay that's it yeah. that's okay and then communication True, yeah communication and that's like when we when we say like oh we crack the code with dog training it isn't like a sales pitch to just oh yeah we crack the code no it is we've we've been able to help people communicate with their dogs better and so now once they communicate you have that respect because now the dog understands what the expectations are so and you're able to build that relationship yeah and them. then you build that relationship and then it's just a heck of a lot easier folks who would you rather have your dog trained by these two wonderful folks from Canada yeah. or some asshole that beats your dog. Exactly. Like the mine. Yeah. We almost, it, he almost you, died for it. That's, yeah. well, I, and, <laughs> that's and how much passion I have for dog training. I almost died to get to the next level. Dude, you mm -hmm. almost died to come see me. You almost died to get to the next level. You, you'd <laughs> almost die a lot. I do. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm resilient. Yeah. It yeah. just keeps me on my toes. <laughs> um, I was going to say, how do you keep a dog from... Like if a dog is, is, is afraid, how do you teach it some confidence so it's not afraid? A lot of it is obedience. So you teach it different obedience skills. You put it out into um, different stressful, we actually did a YouTube video just not too long ago about this, about putting your dog you into- You guys have a YouTube channel? Yes, we do. we do. What's your YouTube channel? Arsenal K9. Everything's Arsenal K9, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow them on Instagram. What were you gonna say? So you have to, you have to create, um, stress in your dog like stress isn't always bad thing right you got to take small steps and put your dog into stressful situations in order for them to build confidence yeah just like people right you have to get outside your comfort zone to build confidence to get to that next step right so the same with dogs um you have to get them out like puppies let them explore let them learn let them you know maybe they get poked by a cactus right that's <laughs> one of our dogs never been never seen a cactus before it was running up sticks its nose in it gets poked by a cactus now it now it's learned something right and it's not scared of it but it knows to respect those kind of boundaries the same with taking them out getting them in public um letting them see other things and other people and other dogs but not necessarily letting them engage engage so mm -hmm. that's kind of how you build confidence because if you have a puppy or a new dog that you take out, you don't know what a, another person or another dog is going to do. So you want to keep your dog safe, right? You don't, if one attack from another dog is going to make your dog's, your, your puppy's life harder because then now you got to overcome that stress, that, that issue that the dog had with that other dog does that make sense the trauma the yeah trauma. exactly yeah, funny. and it's yeah. you're like you're an advocate for your dog your dog can't communicate the same way you can right so you got to put yourself in a position to protect your dog in all these environments especially especially puppies right because they are so like malleable and you know fragile and you know the world is they're still figuring everything out right so you have to you know make sure that you control the variables as much as possible but letting them have those small wins so they're like they you do want you, those you, puppies to think they're top of the world do you think if a dog is a biter and you bite the dog it'll stop biting it, you like you yeah like I saw a video the other day where the little kid, he's probably three years old, the dog bit the kid and the kid started crying. So the kid grabbed that freaking dog and started biting it, <laughs> biting it back. The dog's going, mark, 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 mark. It depends what kind of dog you yeah. have. That could turn out very badly for well, the child. Well, it was child. a puppy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't have turned out bad for this in this case, but yeah. it was a puppy. But I was wondering. I thought to myself, that's funny. Probably but would. I wonder if that would stop that dog from biting. 
Well, it's similar to how the mom would deal with it. It also shows you how advanced human beings are yeah. with, our, with our hands and shit. Mm-hmm. Like that, there was just a little tiny baby damn near three yeah. years old, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the puppy and the puppy, you know, bit its leg and that baby you can see it get angry grab that freaking dog that (laughs) dog had no ability to defend itself and this was a three-year-old baby yeah yeah it's like dude like that's crazy yeah so in that like yeah because of that that being a puppy and being young you know that could have been enough of a like a correction really Mm -hmm. from that kid to have the dog understand like whoa okay i'm not gonna do that right but you know it it depends on the dog too right if he would have done that to an adult dog that was maybe a little bit more confident or aggressive that could have been well there was a there was an incident here where a a one-year-old uh crawled on the floor got on the back of their big old dog i forget what kind it was but it was a big one Mm -hmm. and that dog turned around and bit its head and the baby died yeah Mm -hmm. like that yeah can you imagine and the dog they said the dog has been the nicest dog never bites never growls Mm -hmm. nicest dog ever yeah and actually killed your baby that's horrible holy Mm -hmm. shit dude what do you do i know and that again that's where like that ultimate like that respect right because they're still they're still animals and they're still going to behave how they're you know yeah like their natural behavior and that's right? one of the well, we're animals we and we're at yeah one of the things we see is people try to turn dogs into into people they give it the same feelings and the same um just the same yeah the same feelings they just give give that to the dogs and the dogs don't have that right they don't have that reasoning like we do they're on a three second loop mm-hmm. exactly all right well listen folks appreciate you guys coming in yeah, this especially awesome. you didn't die this time. Did didn't you? die this time. Not yet. No. You could have. <laughs> you you, you keep the story going with the guy that was breaking into the van. Yeah, you yeah. could have died that night. I could have. Yeah, could have. I could have been a mass murderer. You know, one time me and my buddy we drove to L.A. in this Trans Am and it was had a T-top, and uh, we were sleeping in the car because we didn't have any money. So we slept in the car and we just find a little spot in a little alley or something. And one night we woke up and there was a helicopter shining the lights on us. So we're like this all. A sudden cops start coming around the corner we're like what the hell we're like what are you doing so they said get out of here um they're looking for somebody and it turned out it was the i-5 killer richard ramirez no oh, really? remember oh. richard ramirez yeah i remember the name yep dude we were sleeping in a car <laughs> where they were looking for him yeah and the t-tops were off and we were just sleeping in a car so we could have died that night yeah. you could have died you, you don't know who's trying to break in nope. your van no nope. anyway appreciate you guys coming in risking your life yeah. yeah no it's been it's been great like i said we for people that are listening that are wanting to implement what you say like we are proof that this this works you know what you're saying is working you know go out there and meet people all that kind of stuff because are you saying that i speak the truth you speak the truth you're the real bradley that's right see there's another <laughs> that's that's boom. Boom. i had to get that. that last one folks go get go get your dog training from arsenal k9 the number nine dot com go follow these guys arsenal k9 academy me on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Go get their book on Amazon, Odin's new best friend, Ultimate Canine Planner. And until next time, keep it real. So if you want to go do something big with your life, let's say, it's going to be it's going to be the people close to you that are threatened by you wanting to do something bigger with your life that are going to come to you and suppress you with I'm worried about you. Don't you think you just want to get a normal job? Don't you want to just settle down? Don't you think you want to just do this over here.